Three times the devil says if in Matthew 4. He has the nasty nerve to say if, if, if to Jesus. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit to do battle with our great enemy in the desert. The same tempter who long ago defeated our first parents, Adam and Eve. The same tempter who had been on an undefeated run since then. And now he's applying his same foul trade to our Savior. Unlike Adam and Eve, Jesus didn't have all the nourishment of Eden at his fingertips. He's on a 40-day, 40-night empty stomach. Satan slinks up to Jesus and has the nerve to say, If, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. If you are the Son of God, please. Jesus is already eternal Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He was already declared by the Father in the chapter just before this one to be the Son of God at his baptism as the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. The Father said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. And the devil still had the nerve to say, If. Then the devil took him to the pinnacle of the temple and said, If again. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up unless you strike your foot against a stone. The devil tries his hand at the Bible here with a little cut and paste job. Notice what he leaves out and notice what he leaves off. He leaves out the part of the Messiah being protected in all his ways, which includes temptation. And the devil leaves off the part where Jesus will come and crush the head of the serpent. Amazing how he left that off. But still he has the nerve to say if. Third round, he says to Jesus, all the kingdoms of the world I will give you if, there it is again, if you will fall down and worship me as if it were his to give. But this is a wicked temptation because Satan is offering Jesus a suffering-free, cross-free path to glory. And that would mean no hope for us. But Jesus had already chosen to embrace suffering and a cross. And he body slams the devil with the written word of God here. Every time the devil says, if Jesus says it, Jesus says, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus says, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus says, be gone, Satan, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Jesus defeated the devil that day and he defeated him on the very day he crushed his lying jaws with his own heel on the cross. But don't expect the enemy to give you a free pass now because you're a Christian. In fact, it's the opposite. The enemy will keep flapping his gums on you. And you know the sorts of things that the devil says. If only you were smarter and didn't make so many mistakes. If only you were prettier or better looking. If only you were more popular or more athletic, more productive or successful. If only you didn't battle depression. If only that person hadn't hurt you. If only you weren't so full of anxiety. If only you had more money. If only you were enough. If only you hadn't done the very thing you vowed you would never do again. You know the sorts of things Satan says to you. Every time the devil says if, you remember that Jesus says it. Remember the great it by which the enemy lost his hold on you forever. Jesus said it is finished. Every time now the enemy says if, God's word says it. It is written. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. It is written. Baptism now saves you. It is written, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, for there is no if in baptism. You can forget what the devil says. Your God says, you are mine. Your Savior says, you are forgiven.